Ladies and gentlemen, um, you know, thank you for giving us this opportunity to make this presentation here. Um, I'll request everyone to take their seats so that we can start with the presentation. <clears throat> so anyway, I'm here to um, speak about what uh, UAVs can do for the security uh, uh, arena. And uh, before I jump into the presentation, um, <clears throat> yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. <clears throat> so as I said, I'm here to make a small presentation. Uh, hopefully it'll um, not put anyone to sleep um, about what UAVs can do for the security sector in India. And before I do that, I just want to spend um, a few minutes to introduce our company, Taneja Aerospace and Aviation. Uh, we were the first company in India to start manufacturing aircraft. Uh, in 1994, we used to manufacture, we started manufacturing a six-seater aircraft called a P-68C. Uh, we have since been working very closely with um, a lot of public sector organizations and DRDO laboratories. Uh, we work with ISRO, with um, HAL, with BEL, ECIL, and a number of other companies. We are working with the Air Force currently on the AN-32 modification program as well as on the MiGs. Um, we have also worked on all the aircraft pretty much all the uh, flying platforms that are with the Navy today. And we've had a long association with uh, UAVs. We um, manufactured the Nishant airframe. The Nishant was, uh, is, is a UAV that has been designed by the, uh, by the Aeronautical Defense Establishment, ADE. <coughs> Currently, we are also manufacturing the airframe for the Rustam. Um, again, a UAV designed by um, ADE. Uh, we operate out of an airfield uh, at, in Hosur, just outside of Bangalore, where we have a, a runway. And what we are trying to do now is to actually leverage the knowledge that we have in the aviation sector to put it to use in the, AV, in the UAV arena. And we've gathered together a team of experts who are uh, creating solutions for different applications in the UAV space. Um, these are some of the application areas they cover, that we cover, uh, not only in terms of security, but in a number of other application, a number of other areas as well. UAVs have a very wide-ranging um, applic very wide-ranging application um, across a spectrum of um, uh, across a spectrum of areas. Um, we do um, reconnaissance, border control, security and defense, of course, which I'll speak about in greater detail. Uh, emergency relief and disaster relief, um, agriculture and crop inspection. Uh, this, in fact, is a sector that's growing rapidly. There's a number of sensors that can be mounted on UAVs by which you can measure um, the um, fertilizer uptake by a crop, and you can get to get a better sense of uh, what uh, what kind of uh, you know what kind of pests are attacking a crop, or what kind of uh, element is deficient in a particular crop. And there's, of course, the uh, remote sensing. Um, activities which include uh, power line inspection, gas pipeline inspection, uh, fire hazard inspection, uh, po anti-poaching applications, and all kinds of other applications uh, in, in terms of remote sensing. Um, I now come to the presentation on what UAVs can do uh, in terms of providing security or enhancing uh, security. Law and order maintenance is uh, something, in this sector, I think UAVs have already begun to find application in India as well. A number of police uh, forces are already very actively using uh, UAVs to uh, bolster their own uh, surveillance efforts. Um, there is, um, you know, a lot of information that can be provided by UAVs today. Um, I will not go into, I'll not read each line because I think you can do that for yourselves. Um, Border uh, patrol and maritime surveillance, again, um, UAVs can access areas which are typically not easily accessible. And again, there are a number of different types of missions that can be carried out by the UAV. Once we understand what exactly uh, you are trying to do, we have to go back and actually tailor make the UAV because in terms of range as well as in terms of the sensors that are mounted on the UAV, we can change, you know, alter all that to suit the mission requirements. Uh, crowd and riot management, um, this is again uh, an area where UAVs are finding a great uh, application. 
we can actually um, deliver uh, tear gas or specific um, specific payloads in in trying to control um, uh, crowds. Um, you know, we can protect the police forces in doing that. We don't have to get the police forces in clo close contact uh, with the crowds. And also, actually, here, if you marry uh, some amount of artificial intelligence with the UAV in terms of recognizing um, recognizing face recognition. Uh, then um, we are able to actually detect faces in a crowd, and the technology in this space is, is rapidly improving. So we, in theory now, you need not even actually have an entire face uh, to, be, to be able to recognize a person, your par by, uh, you know, part of your nose or ear or some other um, part of your um, face can be used to actually recognize a person with a fair degree of certainty. In search and risk rescue missions, uh, UAVs are truly a force multiplier because instead of using helicopters to search for people and identify people who are trapped, you can actually use a UAV to tag a person. You can uh, even, uh, even where in, in, in using night vision or the thermal imaging systems, you can find people who are trapped in debris, locate them, and then transmit that information to a helicopter so that the helicopter is not used is, the helicopter's time is not wasted in trying to identify uh, people. Similarly, UAVs can be used to deliver this, uh, relief in terms of uh, aid or in terms of medicines or food, and you don't have to, again, use a helicopter for that. Uh, this, we believe, again, is an area where UAVs will find increasing application. Again, this is just something about uh, UAVs, uh, specific types of UAVs. The UAVs, uh, you know, they come in various forms. Uh, they can be fixed wing, they can be rotary wing, um, and again, the mission profiles can vary. Um, you can, you know, you can have a, you, different types of networks to communicate with the UAV. And um, once the UAV is up and flying, you can actually change your mission while the UAV is in the air, so that, you know, you select a waypoint, the UAV goes there, it can automatically go to waypoints, and you can change the waypoints while the UAV is still halfway through its mission. Um, intelligent vision-based target detection. This is something that's quite important and can be used to identify or distinguish friend from foe. So if you have um, specific instances where your, your people are going in for a mission, uh, if the, f the people on our side can be geotagged so that the UAV can distinguish between your own people and, and the people on the other side. Uh, we, are, we are now currently developing a tethered UAV. UAVs, you know, by the, with the fact that they, are, they have a limited amount of um, fuel, uh, whether it's um, in the form of a battery, uh, if you have a tethered UAV, it means that it is actually tethered to the ground with a very thin cable, and you supply power from the ground, so the UAV can remain in the air uh, for a very long time, technically forever, um, other than to bring it down for maintenance. So this is a, something, again, that we are developing, and we should have up and ready very soon. Um, in terms of types of uh, imaging system or remote sensing systems uh, that can be installed today, there are a whole host of systems ranging from just plain high definition cameras to um, thermal imaging systems, uh, which can, which you know, which again, depending on what the mission is, you can change the um, change the sensing system. At Tal, we see ourselves more as a technology integrator than someone providing a specific UAV as a, as, a, as a specific product. So we don't see ourselves as a product company, we see ourselves as a company that provides solutions based on what your requirement is. And so we try to understand what the particular requirement is. It varies from customers across, um, uh, re, um, you know, across application area, and it also varies across um, what you know what you intend to do in a in a specific situation so we our job we see as a, someone who brings together technologies that in many instances are already available sometimes in an open source environment sometimes uh, you know something that one has to develop in house but we bring that together and provide a customized solution what we also try to do is not just sell you a uav and that's also possible um, but to provide you a solution where we can operate the uav maintain the UAV, provide you the data in the format that you require. Often the data, in the, the understanding how to interpret the data or creating a system, an automated system to interpret the data is just as important as making a UAV that collects uh, data. So that's, uh, that's my presentation. Uh, thank you.